If you have your Bible, let's go to Genesis chapter 41 and verses, um, I'm sorry, Genesis 37 and verse 3. I want to speak today a message that will be titled Four Seasons. As a year has four seasons, there is a winter, there is a spring, there is a summer, and there is a fall. Each season, things change. There's a different weather, there's different things you can do and you cannot do. Uh, different uh, seasons require different things that are done. I believe same thing, life has seasons. It's true that it probably has more than four, but I want to highlight four seasons that I believe many people that are in this room are going through right now and what we can do in these four seasons. In Genesis chapter 37 verse 3 it says the following, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a tunic of many colors. I'm going to use the four seasons from the story of Joseph and I'm going to borrow, if I can take somebody who has a jacket, if I can have Adrian first please, I will have Adrian and I need three more people with the jacket please, three more people with the jacket, yeah. Uh, Johanna in second. If I can have one more person that has a that has a jacket. Um, awesome. Gamma. Let, let's, let's come on the stage and then I need one more who has like a fancy, cool, shiny. Uh, uh, all right, all right. Just hoping for a guy but that girl is fine too. Let, let's, 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 let's go. You're gonna represent Joseph. All right, so uh, uh, Jessica, Jessica Joseph starts with J, amen. And so let's, 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 let's go in, let's go in. And so four seasons, there's just only, uh, well, spread out, all right, all right, all right, perfect, perfect. Season one is when Jacob puts a tunic of many colors on Joseph. This season speaks of a time when someone loves you and loves you enough to put on you a colorful coat. In other words, speak words of affirmation, words of identity, words about who you are. And this tunic coat, because it's made out of many colors, when you wear it and you believe what your mentors or your parents or your teachers or a prophetic voice speaks into your life when you believe in that something interesting happens it opens up your spirit for a God to give you a colorful dream see many people don't have dreams because they're negative on the inside they're so insecure the only thing they think of their future is a nightmare they're expecting the worst things to happen. They expect God will never use them. And so if you want to have a dream for your future, don't just ask God for a dream. Ask God for a prophetic voice into your life that will put a coat on your insecurity which will open your spirit to hear from God. I believe God will give you a colorful dream if you receive a colorful code from those people he places into your life. It could be your mom, it could be your dad, it could be your mentor, it could be your pastor, it could be a prophet, it could be someone with the word from God that will give you a code, meaning give you a sense of what's right with you. Because everyone will tell you what's wrong with you. But Joseph was told by Jacob what was right with him and it made him feel good. And it made him start having weird dreams where he started to see other people liking him too. It kind of got a little bit overboard with his dreams. I believe colorful dreams are a result of a colorful code placed to you by people who trust, believe and speak life into you. That's the season one. Every person needs to have a colorful code. This year God wants to give you someone into your life who will speak into your life what's right with you. You will always have people who will tell you what's wrong with you but someone who will speak your destiny, speak your purpose, that you're a man of God, that you're a man of purity, that you're a good husband, that you're a mighty preacher, that you're going to be a prosperous businessman, that you're going to be a generous man, that you're a good preacher, that you're a prophet, that you are a voice to the nation, that you will prosper, that you will have your own house, that you will beat that addiction, that you are loved, that your past doesn't determine your future, that your issue is not your identity, that somebody who will put a coat on you. I just ask you when somebody gives you a coat, put it on. When God gives you a prophecy, put it on. 
when God gives you something right about you put it on you walk with it praise God for it don't say I don't deserve it don't say that's not true say Lord thank you I don't feel it I don't think it's true but I will put it on me Touch your neighbor say put on that coat say put on that coat that's why the Bible says put on Jesus Christ the Bible says put on the armor of God we don't have to make it we just have to put it on when a pastor speaks over you when your home group leader when your parents speaks over you you're a you're a great man don't just say, ah that's not true put that on don't put it in the closet put it on your shoulders because when you do that this is what happens God enlarges your capacity to dream a dream is a result of someone putting on a person what God thinks of them what is right with them not what is wrong with them that's the season one the season two in Genesis chapter 39 verse 16 it says she kept his garment with her until his master came home this is unfortunately this was ripped from him by his brothers he got a second code this was a so, uh, code of a slave he became a slave he went from a favored son to a rejected slave but this code it didn't stay there for very long too because Potiphar's wife she <laughs> she ripped that from him and uh, he ran in purity I want you to see the third the third season uh, Genesis 41 verse 14 it says then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon and he shaved he changed his clothing and came to Pharaoh so Joseph goes from the favored son to a rejected prisoner they gave him a certain certain clothes for the prison uh, excuse me, slave and then after that his life doesn't get better his life gets worse he goes into becoming a prisoner with a record of sex offender now we don't think of Joseph as a sex offender but that's exactly what his record said if he would have volunteered at Hungry Jen and the planning center it will pull up his background as sex offender his record was tarnished see we think we know he didn't do it but that's not what Egypt knew so imagine in prison that's you know it's one thing when you go to prison because of DUI it's bad not good it's one thing when you go to prison because you were speeding it's bad it's completely different when you're in prison and your reputation is sex offender you took advantage of somebody you raped somebody you uh you 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 you, you used your power against somebody and that is that is bad that is that is painful that is hurtful and that was exactly what Joseph was in I believe it probably cannot get worse than that in that culture in that world it probably cannot get worse than that probably it's better to just not live to be with that kind of reputation and in that kind of a place but the Bible says this code he didn't die with you know who the Bible says he changed his clothing it's a hard to take off because because that thing sticks to you you know your, your background <laughs> you can't just remove it right away you know you it stays for years and then the Bible says after he was removed of the clothing of a prisoner I'm gonna read one more verse and this verse is Genesis 41 verse 42 it says the following then Pharaoh took his ring off of his hand and he put it on Joseph's hand and he clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck if you can take your garment off please I'm gonna be the Pharaoh don't drop this one so the Bible says that Joseph comes in his fourth season and now Pharaoh he puts on a garment now I don't have a gold chain and so a little gangster he puts a chain on Joseph he puts a ring on Joseph and watch this this garment this clothing was never removed by no one it stayed with him for the rest of his life season one season two season three and season four which season 
do you find yourself in today? I'm going to share with you in the conclusion four principles that you have to remember when you're in each one of these seasons. Season one, a man without a vision will always be a slave to his reality. If you are in a season today where just nothing is happening, what God wants to do in your life right now, He wants to give you a vision. He wants to give you, if you can put this on, He wants to give you a vision for your life. He wants to give you a picture of a desired future. Because why is God giving us a vision? Because a vision, write this down, there's three things. One is it gives room for the Holy Spirit to move. Because when you see a vision that is bigger than your present circumstances, that space is for the Holy Spirit. When your vision in your mind about 2020 is the same as it is your life right now, you have no breathing room for the Holy Spirit to do anything. Because you're expecting your life to be as it is right now. There is no room for God. That's why when we say that we want to see every Sunday what we see on our conference, we give room for the Holy Spirit. When we say we want to see our conferences in Toyota Center at Tacoma Dome, we have room for the Holy Spirit. When you are renting right now but you want to own your own home, you give room for the Holy Spirit. If this year is the year you want to start giving more, you give room for the Holy Spirit. Dream big dreams. See someone said this, it says is that if you aim at impossible you will get maximum if you aim at maximum you get minimum but if you aim at minimum you get nothing aim at impossible aim at maximum let God this year give you a dream that is bigger than your reality a dream of having good health a dream of getting out of debt a dream of getting married, a dream of having a family, a dream of blessing somebody with a car. Let God give you a dream of starting your own business. Let God give you a dream of starting your own life group. Why? It might not be where you are but put on that dream, put on that vision because one day the Holy Spirit will take your reality and bring it up to your revelation. But if you don't have a revelation, if you don't have a dream, you have no room for the Holy Spirit to move. The second reason why every person needs to have a dream is it because it elevates you above your present. It gives you faith. It gives you a chance to be on the top of your circumstances, not under your circumstances. It gives you a chance to look at your situation and not feel like it's walking on you, but to feel like you are walking on your situation. When you have a dream, you become not the sidewalk for the problems, you're the walker on your problems. You walk on water, water doesn't walk on you. Holy Spirit pulls you out first your mind, your spirit from your reality and it gives you authority and dominion above it. The third reason why you need to have a dream this year and that is it gives you a sense of focus and motivation. It gives you a purpose to wake up every morning. It gives you a reason why you can save money. It gives you a reason to even to walk with God in purity and godliness. There's a sense of motivation. Dreamers always act different than non-dreamers. For example, watch people who are pregnant. They don't do certain things that everybody else does. They don't go around fighting people on the streets. Why? They're pregnant. They stay away from certain foods. They stay away from certain things. Why? Because they're pregnant. See, when you are pregnant with the vision from God, when you have a dream, you begin to stay away automatically from certain things that other people engage in. Why? Because your dream gives you focus. Your dream gives you faith. Your dream gives you sense of motivation. Your dream, it protects your life. My friend, the moment you get a dream, you will have people who will oppose your dream. You will have people who will look at you, they are non-dreamers, who will hate on you, who will reject you, who will criticize you. Remember this about people who hate dreamers. At first they hate you and then they work for you. Non-dreamers always work for dreamers. If you even watch the people you're working, on, working for right now, it's someone who had a dream, was made fun of, 
was rejected, failed many times and you maybe even were one of them who mocked them and says they're so stupid, such a risk taker, wow how did ever work for them and then their company exploded and you were the first one to apply. <laughs> Never hate people who hate you because you have a big vision. One day they will be working for you. Love them. They will be your employees. Today they're haters, tomorrow they're going to be your employees. Love them. Amen. And if you don't have a dream, don't criticize the dreamers because one day you'll have to ask for apology. Don't be discouraged. If you have a dream and it attracted a lot of criticism, God will bring you up. Somebody say amen. amen. The season one is the season of a dream. I believe in this season every person has to be in all the time. Season two is when the code, it's, it's a season of slavery. It's when you are not spiritually a slave but your circumstances are enslaved and Johanna if you can put on that code for a second what I want to teach today about this season is what God wants to teach us about this season is when seasons change when you go from great dream to a disaster God does not change when your seasons do when the seasons change, leaves fall off, it becomes cold, fruits are no longer on the tree. God does not change because your season has. I want you to see something in the Bible right now that caught my attention this week. In Genesis 39 verses 2 and 3 it says, The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. What caught my attention is it does not say the Lord was with Joseph when he was favored. It says the Lord was with Joseph when he was rejected. Why? Because it's obvious the Lord is with you here. People are giving you nice words. You get prophetic words. You have prophetic dreams. Somebody speaking life into you. God doesn't even have to come in and remind you I am with you because His Word is a confirmation of that. But in here, when there is no more Word, where there is no more dream, where there is no more prophecy, the Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph. Joseph didn't see him there. Joseph didn't feel him there. That's why it says the master, the hidden man saw the Lord is with you. Somehow the master wasn't distracted with the fact that he had rags of a slave. Somehow Egyptian men did not come to Joseph and said, if God is with you, why are you in my house? Even the heathens were able to see that God is with Joseph. I want to remind somebody in this room right now, if your seasons changed and you lost maybe a job, maybe you lost a business, maybe you even lost a family, maybe you lost someone to death or lost someone to cancer and it feels like God has abandoned you. I want to tell you that in this season the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. His name is Emmanuel. He did not leave you. He did not forsake you. I know your husband left. Maybe your kids left but God is with you. Joseph they wrote a death certificate on you but the Lord is with you. He's not intimidated by what people said about you. He is not frightened by your circumstances. God has no phobias. He is not afraid when you go through the valley and you go through the fire. He says, I will be with you. I will hold your hand. I will be your shield. I will be your shelter. I will be your foundation. I will be your stronghold. I will be your refuge. The Lord was with Joseph. And then the Bible says in the next season was Genesis 39 verse 21. It says he goes to prison and it says again, it's interesting, the Lord was with Joseph. It catches my attention. The Bible didn't say the Lord was with him when he reached the palace. And it didn't say he was with him when he got the promise. It's twice says the Lord was with him. Because those were the moments Joseph needed to be reminded just because life got worse. See he went from heart to hell. This is hell. But the Bible says the Lord was with him. When you start getting promotion, God is with you. But when you need to be reminded that the Lord is with you, is when life goes from heart to hell. I want to tell you something, you're not alone. God didn't abandon you. 
God didn't forsake you God did not drop you yes maybe you made some mistakes yes maybe you could have done things a little bit differently to avoid the hellish painful situation the court system and the tickets and the this and all of that you could have done something but God does not leave you because your life gets harder he's not afraid for his reputation he's not afraid what people will think of him because he sticks with you he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother he will go with you through the fire he will go with you through the flame he will go with you through divorce he will go with you through cancer he will go with you through a funeral but he will never leave you and he will never forsake you somebody give God some praise right now is with you. Can you give me a little bit more juice? Because God is with you. I want you to keep in mind three things. Your position doesn't determine your success. You do. It's crazy because Joseph was a slave yet successful. A prisoner yet successful because the Lord was with him. When God is with you, you don't need a perfect position to make an impact. The Bible says a righteous man, he doesn't walk, he doesn't stand, he doesn't sit, but he meditates in the law of the Lord and he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water whose leaf will not wither and he will bear fruit in its season and whatever he does. That means if life throws him in prison, he will run the prison. If life throws him in Potiphar's house, you can one be assured of one thing, he will be successful there. If he becomes a single mom, he will be successful there. If she gets a husband, she will be successful there. Why? Because success rests on God who lives in you, not on your circumstances. That's why if they take your position, they did not take your success. If they take your title, they did not take your anointing. If they fire you, listen, you still have God with you and you still will be successful. Hallelujah. If God is with me, that means that God's success doesn't depend on my position. It depends on God living in me. The second thing that I'm reminded if God is with me is that I have to run from temptation, not flirt with trouble. Because God was with Joseph, Joseph realized I can't flirt with sin. Potiphar's wife was flirting with him. She was casting longing eyes on him and the Bible did not say that Joseph was trying to witness to her. Don't witness to people you're tempted by. Let somebody else witness to them. You have to flee temptation. Why? Because dreams die daily on the rock of temptations. Dreams are like glass. If you drop it on the rock of temptation, they will scatter. But if you flee temptation, why do you flee temptation? Because God is with you. When you're aware that God is with you, you live a little bit different. It's the same way when you're driving and you're speeding and the police officer is there. How many of you know automatically, without any voice from heaven, you slow down, you quickly check your speed and then you start praying. Even if you're not a Christian, you're like mighty God, Father God, Virgin Mary, anybody out there? Just, just, just want to let you know I'm gonna give to the Red Cross next time I see somebody Lord God just, just just one time just one time it's crazy how your driving changes when you see a police officer when you live with the awareness of who God is who is not your police officer but he is your father he empowers you to flee temptation he empowers you to slow down your dating not to go speeding he, encourage, he empowers you to watch what you watch. He, he changes, he helps you to flee temptation. Can someone say amen? When you're aware that God is with you, not only you realize success depends on God, not just your position, not only you flee temptation, but I also believe is that you will work more on your character than your reputation. I love this about Joseph is when they messed up his reputation, he did not go repairing his reputation. He just continued to be pure. I'm not saying that we shouldn't worry about our reputation but certain things people will do to your reputation are out of your control. Can I ask you for something when you are with God you don't have to fight for people to think good about you. You just have to stay with God so that you stay good and reputation is like a photo on the license. Character is your face. 
the, my, my reputation my license still has no beard when I go in and sometimes they double check me they're like is that is that you I said because it's it's five years old see your reputation is always years old your character is current and let me tell you your reputation will catch up the reputation is what people messed up they did use some kind of a filter some kind of a weird camera on Joseph and they messed up his picture and Joseph didn't go trying to sue everybody he knew that it was out of his control he says I'm not gonna fix my reputation I will fix my character I will remain good to God I want to tell you something enemy can ruin your reputation only you can ruin your character choose to build it with God let this be the year where your character becomes better what people think of you is good but what God thinks of you is different reputation is what people think of you when you move into a neighborhood character is what people think about you when you move out reputation is what men say character is what God's angels say before God's throne reputation is just your photo character is your face but I want us to learn so we learned this is that we have to have a dream we learned that when we are in a difficult season we probably won't feel that God is with us but we have to be reminded that he speaks that he is with us but I want to want to move to a third season and this is a hellish situation this is a season where things have gotten so bad that it feels like it will never be able to get worse this is a situation where it feels like you you are down to nothing you are done you are finished and the enemy says you're done but I want to watch this Joseph in this season if you're taking notes write this down serve other people's dreams when your own dream seems to be dead in here he just helped Potiphar but in here he helped people who were not above him but who kind of were below him and they had dreams one day Joseph went to prison and he didn't walk around complaining whining Joseph went and he saw sad faces of prisoners I mean you know why their faces are sad because they're in prison but Joseph made prison so good that they were not sad because they were in prison they were sad because they had a dream and Joseph comes and he says why your faces are sad and he says I had a dream and this would have been a good moment to say oh I used to have those too <laughs> brother forget about it fast fast you're in prison <laughs> forget about dreams they don't work that's a nightmare not a dream and Joseph doesn't do that I believe in that moment when he, when the man said I have a dream I think Joseph had a conflict because one voice said God failed you and the other voice said God can use you watch this the first time Joseph supernaturally moved in the gifts of the Holy Spirit was in helping someone in this situation he should have been offended at God for abandoning him in gifts of the Holy Spirit did not operate here they did not operate here where they got activated is when he had two choices one is to be offended at God why is he not fulfilling a word to me and the other one is to say I'm gonna still serve I'm hurting but I will serve I'm bleeding but I will still love my pain is not an excuse to help my purpose my pain is not an excuse to help someone in need and something happens Holy Spirit comes supernaturally this wasn't Joseph's wisdom this wasn't Joseph's cleverness it was the gift of the Holy Spirit Pooh, gets activated because when you serve in your painful season you tap into the anointing that is not from you it's from God because you have no resources of your own there there's only resources from heaven and you don't even realize you have them but God activates them somebody give God some praise right now hallelujah when you are serving in this season write this down a this serving activates the gifts of the Holy Spirit not just your wisdom not just your education not just because you knew something it activates the gifts of the Holy Spirit number two is that God cannot entrust you to serve in the palace until he tests you if you can serve in the prison many people say I need a title my friend you need a towel because it's all about serving whether it's in here or in here and many of us will say I will only serve if I have a big audience well one is an audience oh but I need many God looks at us and says if you can't run a mile why do you apply to run a marathon why do you want to run here to reach the masses if you cannot reach one person and you have to be willing to serve in your prison if God has given you a calling to serve in your palace 
and remember this the people you will serve here they will forget you they will not appreciate you and you will feel abandoned and there is a reason for that because God wants you to serve because of him and God wants you to wait for a reward from him the Bible says and the guy he helped forgot about him but God did not when people forget you when you serve them God is your rewarder God keeps the record God keeps the track and I want to tell you one thing those who seek the face of God must believe that he is and he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him this will be a testing ground where you don't get promoted by men you will get neglected overlooked and sometimes criticized by men and what men do is not an excuse but what I'm saying is that God tests the purity of your motive that you expect your reward from God that you don't give that men don't get the credit for what happens in your life but God gets the glory can somebody say amen? amen and I want to share with you the last truth that you learn in your season if you can stand to your feet take your notes you can still take notes while you're there the first thing that we learn is that in this season we learn that our vision has to be bigger than our reality in this season that we learn is that when things are hard God is still with us the presence of our problem is not an indication that God left us in here we learn when things go from hard to a hellish situation that it doesn't give us an excuse to stop serving I am not saying that you there's no time for you know pausing and, and going getting counseling and getting help but people who take years I'm saying I won't help anybody I won't serve anybody because I am hurting I want to tell you something you just extended your hellish situation life is like tennis those who serve well seldomly lose the best way to get out of your situation is through serving serving is the shovel that will get you through every pain Jesus served on the cross by witnessing to another man and arranging housing for his mom healing a man's ear while he was being handcuffed Abraham he prayed for healing when his own wife was buried and Joseph is translating dreams when his own dream is is dead but he doesn't know he's actually watering the dream of his own because God is going to bring the resurrection the last season and this is your destiny season this is when the things you dreamed of things you went through things you survived in and still served in you begin to see the fulfillment of those dreams you learn the gifts of the Holy Spirit here killing a lion and the bear but in here everybody sees you killing a giant in here nobody saw you moving in the prophetic you praying for the sick you serving others but in here the world begins to take a notice God begins to smile at you in here God begins to blow his wind at you it begins to give you grace three things will happen one when Joseph got a breakthrough it broke the cycle of a curse in his family which curse everyone in his family lied their way to prosperity including Abraham he lied about his wife and then somehow they blessed him Isaac did exactly the same thing Jacob exactly the same thing he, he maneuvered his way he, he he did all these things Joseph was the first guy who got to the top without lying the cycle was broken that's why the devil fought him hard here because there was a lot in motion in here God wanted to break how everybody did it in his family the second cycle that I saw that it was broken is that his father had a problem with coats he lied about his birthright he lied to his father and the coat he was wearing brought a problem his kids lied to him about a coat there was a coat curse in his family and this coat broke that cycle you don't see any more codes in the family one of the reasons one of the things that your breakthrough will do and I believe some of you it will be this year is it will break something over your family that has been going on for generations there are people in this room is there has been a, a generational curse of cancer in the family and the things that you go through right now, I want to tell you something. God, your breakthrough, the first thing your breakthrough does is it breaks the cycle. That's why devil will unleash every demon in hell that he can. It's because he knows your breakthrough will end his reign in the future generations. It unleashed the blessing of Abraham. It will unleash the blessing of the Father.
It will unleash the purity. It will unleash the walk with God. The second thing that happened because of his breakthrough is Joseph's breakthrough. Not only it broke the cycle, but I believe his Joseph's breakthrough elevated the life of his whole family higher. His breakthrough relocated his family and gave them better jobs, better houses and the places in different zip code. His breakthrough was so good that it didn't just bless his kids, it actually raised the life being and the income of his whole family. God wants your breakthrough to improve your family. Maybe the family that abandoned you, God wants your breakthrough to bless them. Improve their finances, improve their health, improve their emotions and improve their relationships. Because your breakthrough ends the cycle and your breakthrough elevates people in your family to a higher level. If you're unwilling to talk to your family, you're not ready for your destiny. If you're not willing to pick up the call and say what you meant for evil, God used it for good, you're not ready for your destiny. God cannot trust a destiny to someone with the Hitler's heart. God can only trust someone who can look at his enemies and not squash them with his power, but raise them with his influence. I know daddy abandoned you, but your breakthrough it's not going to block him and put a restraining order on him. Your breakthrough is going to support him financially until he dies. You may say, but I can't do that. You're not ready for your destiny. Because in here, God will break your pride in here. So when you come here, all that's left is the love of God. All that's left is God give me the power and you can trust me. I won't hurt people with it. I won't abuse people with it. I will raise their life. I will make their life better. This breakthrough not only breaks the cycle, not only it rise, raises the family higher. They, they live better. They, they, they eat better. They dress better. They now are happier because of Joseph's breakthrough. But lastly, is Joseph feeds those he don't know through that breakthrough. The breakthrough is not to make you famous, my friend. The breakthrough is not to make you a millionaire. The breakthrough is not to make you even known. The breakthrough is to, so you can make a great impact on those God will place in the sphere of your influence. God will bless me if He can use me to bless the world. God will give me the revelation if He can use me to bless others. But the moment I start thinking that it's about me, that it's God wanting to raise me. No, 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 no. The reason why we raise these lamps here is because they provide light. The moment they stop shining, we replace them. God will elevate you if he can shine through you but the moment you think it's all about you my friend God has other light bulbs in stock he will replace you Esther you will raise for such a time as this but please don't forget it is God's purpose that needs to prevail businessman businesswoman God will bless you with finances things will become easier for you than others money will flow through you God will elevate you so you can shine it's not about you. It's not about your wisdom and your cleverness. It's about God's purpose and God's call on your life. Please don't miss it this year. Please don't miss it that it's not about you. That's why leverage your life for the influence of God's kingdom. That's why we're going to fast. We're going to pray. We're going to say, God, raise us up so we can deliver. Raise us up so we can heal, so we can save. Raise us up so we can prophesy. Raise us up so we can give bread to Egyptians, to people in Canaan. God, you can trust me. The power you give me, I won't hurt my enemies. I won't waste my time answering and squashing my critics. You can trust me. People who abandon me and hurt me, I will help them. God, trust me with that. And how you can trust me is because when I was at my lowest, I did not abandon you. When I was at my lowest, I did not stop your calling on my life. And God, the reason why you can trust me is because when things were hard, I knew that you were with me and I lived holy and I received your dream. If you're in one of these four seasons right now of your life, I want you to come to you, to come to the front. We're going to pray right now. I want to pray over you. If you're still like, you know, Vlad, this was for me. One of these seasons I'm in right now, just come. We're just going to pray right now. You guys can stand here for just just a moment.
going to pray Holy Spirit I thank you for your presence in this room right now I thank you God the breakthrough this year is the year of breakthrough if, if I can have the pamphlet if I can have the pamphlet for this year thank you Holy Spirit we love we love you God not by might not by power Lord she come on church raise your hands right now this is going to be a year of a season shift season shift season shift shift of seasons season shift God is giving somebody a dream God is strengthening somebody who's been going through a hellish situation to let you know you're not alone yes you made mistakes but you're not alone gifts of the Holy Spirit are going to be activated this year in your life in your most painful season in your most difficult situation you will see the glory of God God is bringing breakthrough he will end the cycle of death and funerals he will end the cycle of poverty and divorce he will end the cycle of disease he will end the cycle of adultery he will end the cycle of addiction he will end the cycle of depression it will end the cycle of insomnia it will end the cycle you will love those who hurt you you will forgive those that took advantage of you you will be better than them come on every mouth open begin to declare that over this year begin to declare that over your life pray right now for our dream we're gonna pray right now for the dream that God has given our church to see thousands locally millions globally we're gonna pray right now for your dream some of you you have a dream for your business you say God raise me up I promise to shine I promise not to flicker but I promise to be a light I promise to be generous I promise to be kind and loving raise me if you have that dream raise your hands with that we're gonna begin to pray pray for your dream right now if you don't have one say Lord impart your dream into my heart right now in the name of Jesus let's pray church yes in Jesus mighty name father we, we're asking you father God ignite those dreams within our heart God stir that fire within us God in the mighty name of Jesus God that we'll dream big dreams in the mighty name of Jesus God release your grace over our lives Father God stir that flame within us in the mighty name of Jesus let us see those pictures as you show us in the mighty name of Jesus every fear we come against that in the mighty name of Jesus revive us Holy Spirit revive us Holy Spirit as you take more of us and give us more of you give us your dreams your visions God your pictures within our hearts God in Jesus mighty name in the name of Jesus and right now we're gonna begin to pray that God will that we will live in God's presence this year I want you to pray that you will live with the awareness of God's presence that you will yield to him in Jesus name place your hand upon your heart right now let's begin to pray say God let me live with the awareness that you are with me that I'm not alone let me run from sin Lord let me know that whatever position that I'm in you are with me God and Father I pray that you will give me that grace let's pray that prayer right now Yes, Father God, right now I place my hand over my heart and I yield every part of me, God. Every part of me and every part of my life to you, oh Holy Spirit, that you will open my eyes in my situation. That I will not focus on my circumstance, my situation or my problems, but I will focus on you for you are my mighty God. You are my fortress. You are my God, my rock, and I will focus on you, Lord. I'll become more aware of your presence, of your Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me to see you in every area of my life, to give me a hope and a future, Lord, that I will not be overcome with doubt or fear, God, that I will not be overcome with a victim mentality, but I will come and with the mentality of a kingdom citizen, of a son and a daughter of you, oh, Holy Spirit. I just ask God right now that you continue to put that fire in our hearts as we yield it to you, oh Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Right now we're going to pray for this, this, this fourth, the third season. I want to pray right now for those, some of you are standing here and some of you are standing there in the live stream who are right now going through a very, very, very difficult situation. Instead of just praying, God, I want it to end it. It will end. I want us to pray. I said, one God, activate what no other season can activate in me. God, pull things out from me that no other season can pull. 
teach me something that I could never learn at any other place in my life let's begin to pray for that right now and if, if you can pray for let's begin to say Lord activate your gifts let me be a servant some of you you need to go to growth track today some of you need to sign up to serve because last seasons you haven't been doing that and right now you notice that something is hurting but God is saying I want you to begin to serve other people who are in more need than you let's begin to pray for that right now father in the name of Jesus Lord Lord though it though we may be facing Lord God a desert though we may be in a prison time right now in the jail sales god in the name of jesus i pray lord god that you make a way lord god and that we submit ourselves to you to your will to your ways god that though the faith may be hard to find lord god that we find it within us lord and that through your spirit you join with our spirit and your gifts your fruits and your fire will flow through our hands and flow through our mouths in the name of jesus god though we may be facing the storm we shall raise our hands and the seas shall be calmed in the name of jesus god though we walk through the fire lord god we will not be consumed we will not be burned for you are with us god though we walk through the valleys of the shadow of death we shall fear no evil for you are with us god we shall step in faith and we shall walk by faith and not by sight god because it is not by might it is not by power it is not by words but it is by your spirit god leading us guiding us directing us every step of the way in the name of jesus god no matter what we face we shall follow you every step in jesus mighty name we're gonna pray the last prayer right now and Jessica uh, okay so Jessica yeah that's fine she can't pray uh, Jacob can I have you pray this is Jessica if you can step in a little bit closer this is one of the most responsible season of your life because this is the season when you have a lot of money but you also have a lot of excuses not to tithe this is a season where you have a lot of influence but you become very protective not to be the light of Jesus Christ so you don't lose customers this is the season where it's easy to feel like I got there on my own. I studied better. I went to school. I lived pure. I didn't smoke. I didn't get, didn't drink. I didn't do none of the stuff. The reason why I'm on the top is because I'm better than others. The reason why you're not the top is because there's a darkness below and God wants to shine. And the moment you stop shining for selfish reason to become more about you, I'm going to tell you my friend, your top is not going to be the top it's gonna to hurt you you're gonna have money but no meaning you will have popularity but no purpose and you'll be worse than people who don't even have a home why because you will have no no life because your purpose is missed and that's why God told to Esther he says if you are quiet during this time he says you're on the top you got the breakthrough you got the position you got the influence but you're not leveraging it for the kingdom and for your purpose and I pray that God will help me right now. God will help you right now to fulfill that purpose when you get that breakthrough. To be generous, to be loving and to be serving with the influence and the leverage that you will have for your generation. The businessmen, the people who have a position in the community, people who have the means that you will begin to leverage that for the betterment of other people. You can change the whole world but you have to start doing something slowly but surely. Otherwise your prosperity is about you. It's not about you my friend. We are Christians. We are elevated because God wants to shine. Some of you in this room if you make a promise today and say God if you raise me up I will shine. God will raise you up faster. And some of you, you are raised up. Could you right now say, God, help me this year to think of others more. Help me this year to serve others. Help me this year to shine. Help me this year to tithe. Help me this year to pray for others. Help me this year to bless others, God. Help me this year not to destroy my enemies, but to feed my enemies. Let's pray that prayer right now, church. Stretch your hands right now. Let's begin to pray because breakthrough is on the way. Some of you, you are in the breakthrough. Say, God, help me to manage this breakthrough so it leads to more breakthrough. Father, we come before you. We ask you, Jesus, for your heart, for the Father's heart to dwell within us, Holy Spirit. We ask you, Jesus, that you begin to mold the heart to be just like yours. A loving, merciful, giving, generous heart that you have towards us, Jesus. That we may show it towards our enemies. That we will show it towards our friends and our family. That we will show a heart of a generous and loving heart and merciful heart to those who are lost. To those who are suicidal. To those who are broken. Just like 
like we once were. Holy Spirit, we ask you that you mold our hearts right now. As we have our hands lifted, our Holy Spirit, we receive the love. We receive the mercy. We receive the grace to pour on to others, Lord Father. Let us have an overflow to pour on to others, Holy Spirit. We ask you, Father, that wherever we go, that we will help the people who are in need. That we will give money to the poverty. Prayer to those who are sickness. Lord Father, deliver to those who are bound. And salvation to those who are lost. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Every head bowed and every eye closed. When you get the breakthrough, never become big in your eyes. Never become too big to pray and fast. Never become too big to serve and to love others. Remain small in your eyes. If you're in this room today or you're watching us on live stream and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ yet, maybe you're visiting us today from uh, for the first time. Your friends brought you and you have not made a decision to give Jesus your whole life and to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Would you give me the greatest privilege in the world to lead you into that relationship today? As we start this new year, this is the first Sunday. Let this be, let this be the Sunday where your life takes a turn because Jesus becomes the Lord. If you're saying, Vlad, I am that person. I'm not saved. I don't know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Maybe you grew up Catholic. Maybe you consider yourself a good and a religious person. But that's not enough to enter heaven. Jesus is the only way to God. Not your goodness and not being Christian or Catholic. It's being born again. It's being forgiven of your sin. If you are in that category and you need to get saved, you need to give your life to the Lord. I'm going to count to three. When I do so, I'm going to ask you to slip your hand high. To identify yourself saying, you know what Vlad, count me in that prayer. I would like to get saved. One, two, three. Just raise that hand high. Saying, you know, I would like to get saved today. I would like to give my life to God today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I see your hand. If you're watching us on live stream, you can just comment below and our team will reach out to you and let you know what to do next. If you're watching us on live stream, you can give your life to Jesus as well by commenting below. If you need to get saved today, I would like you to make that decision. If you raise your hand or you wanted to raise your hand or you have a friend that you've been talking to about Christ and you know it's their moment. I'm going to ask you to quickly just come out of your seat and come right here. That gentleman is making his way right here. And if you need to get right with the Lord, just come. Just come. We're going to make some room for you right now. As they do so, church, let's give them a round of applause. Come on. If you need to get right with God, if you need to recommit, recommit and, and give your life to Jesus, you just come. Just come. Just come. Today is your day of salvation. Today is your day to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. To Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray this prayer together right now. Those on live stream and those here, pray this prayer with me. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of all my sin and wash me with your precious blood. I surrender my whole life to you and from this day forward it's your life I accept your gift of forgiveness I receive that salvation in Jesus name Amen hey this is Pastor Vlad and thank you for watching this sermon please click on the subscribe so that you can be a part of our hungry generation YouTube community and click on the bell as well so that you can be notified when we upload the new sermon. Thank you for watching and God bless you.